Hey, this is Latif Mikado, and you're listening to the Good Night Freestyle Podcast, where I take some time each night to try and reflect on the freestyle scene, where it is, where it's going, and try to figure out how to sustain it, not just for future generations to enjoy, but also to benefit. So sit back, relax, and let's talk some freestyle. Hey, what's up, everyone? It's Latif, and welcome to the Good Night Freestyle Podcast, and this is episode 48. Um, It's Monday evening. Um, This weekend was uh, the trip to Fresno. Uh, We had a good time. It was actually, it was fun. It was a lot of wear and tear on the body, man. I know you guys are probably saying, no, oh, you freaking traveling with all these artists, you're doing these concerts, you're all over the country, you should be happy. Oh, trust me, I'm thrilled. I love what I do. I thank God every day that I do what I do. But it still doesn't, you know, get rid of the fact that shit is starting to hurt, man. The body's starting to hurt. But, you know, all that's trying to tell me is, yo, you got to work out. I got to stop being a fatty, man. I got to get to the gym. It's critical. I told you the seatbelt story. I can't deal with that no more. But you know what? I got another show in two weeks. Ah, there's a good chance I'm going to have another seatbelt story to tell you. Because I just got to get back in the flow. Me and Andrew, you know what we do, man? We've been members of the Aquatic Center in our neighborhood, which is a dope gym, racquetball, basketball, indoor-outdoor pool. I mean, state-of-the-art. I mean, it's really cool. They even have, like, aerobics inside. They have yoga. All all the different things. They even have a day camp. Like, there's no excuse. And it's not far. I'm talking about... Driving, I'm there in three minutes, man. It's like right up the block. It's like right up the block, and um, and uh, it is you know. And the thing is, when we were paying, I don't think we were paying much for it. I think for my entire family, I'm talking about me, Angel, Erica, Adam, Adam's girl Danielle, and at that time, Santana and King. Okay, seven people. Seven people, I think we were paying $70 a month. That's nothing. Not for all of that. It was really dope. And I think for the three of us, so they're far. They don't go to that anymore. We took everybody else. So it's just me, Angel, and uh, Santana. So we're looking at probably about $35 a month. Again, it's nothing. But this is the problem. This is where that nothing turns out to be really expensive. Why we second guess it sometimes. Because you're like, well, it's only $35, man. Just... Pay it and go. That's the problem. We don't go. Like, for me to pay that and not go for an entire year is so common. I mean, what is that? I'm investing how much? Like $400 to these people? Like donating $400? (laughs) I have other things I would rather donate $400 to, not if I'm not going. So that's uh, that's the whole thing right now. You know what I mean? Put this in. When it was all of it, it was $70 a month. We did that for several years. I'm talking about... I don't know, maybe six, seven years at $75 or $70 a month. What am I paying there? Almost what? A G every year? Something like that. And nobody's going. Now, there was a time when me and Angel, we, we got we, we got pretty, you know, we got pretty busy. We just put it in our heads. We went. I used to box, so I know how to train. I know how to work out. I know it doesn't look it, but I do. I really do. <laughs> and, uh, but I still ask questions, you know, because I'm not... I'm not up on some of the some of the stuff and some of the machines I'm not familiar with. So I like some free weights, some machines, depends on what I'm doing. But the basic stuff I can get you going. Uh, I got Angel in really great shape. Actually, I think we were both in pretty good shape. And we were playing a lot of racquetball. In fact, I got some videos I need to pull up that I wanted to, I wanted to put it out while we were doing it. Now if I put it out now, everybody's gonna look at those videos and say, yo man, is that them now? Then they look good. Look at look at those old people go. <laughs> but no, nah, it really wasn't that that long ago. Maybe five years, you know. So we were still late forties, you know. <laughs> right now we're early fifties. <laughs> but um, but yeah, man. So um, yeah. So I call it donating. So you know, we donate to the gym every year. So now, yeah, you know, I still spoke to. Her. I told her. I said, listen. Then what we do is we freeze the account. So when we freeze the account, uh, excuse me, guys. When we freeze the account. Um, we have to keep it frozen for about six months. If not, we pay a penalty. I don't know what the penalty is. It's not much. Maybe a hundred bucks. Um, 
So I told her, well, I said, man, let's, you know, maybe we need to, you know, get back to the gym. Maybe we just need to, you know, unfreeze it, get our asses back to the gym. So this is my problem, okay? In the mornings is such a creative time for me. It's when I, I get most of my ideas. It's when I like to write. Um, it's just I'm enthusiastic. Like, I just... A million ideas. I mean, I, I bust through so much work within the first, you know, four or five hours when I get up. And um, and I feel like if I'm going to the gym, that I'm going to lose that. So this is a mental thing because I shouldn't be feeling like this at all, for real. I need to make exercising a priority. I know this, okay? Because by me making my exercise and my health a priority, I'll be able to perform my work the stuff that I love to do, much better. Not only that, I'll be able to be comfortable when I fly or, or when I drive or when I'm putting on my damn shoes. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, so, and I know, man, I know it's a priority. Nobody's telling me anything, man. It's just one of those things that is like, and probably nobody likes to work out. I think the only people that like to work out, people that already look good. Because I remember when I was boxing, when I was younger, I went to the gym whether it was a local gym or in my house, I had like a little setup or when I was locked up. And yeah, I worked out quite a bit because I already looked good. I Man, I was already pretty, you know, in, in good shape. So, you know, of course, you want to go there and flex a little bit and kind of tighten it up. And it was easy. You take a weight. I used to take the weight, do three curls and boom, look in the mirror. I'm like, veins popping out, freaking biceps are throbbing. Now it's like I freaking... I can lift weights for two hours, man. And I, I look in the mirror, I look like I just ate dinner. I'm like, what the... What, man, <laughs> you know, so and, and listen, if you're a freestyle fan, there's a good chance you're close to my age, either maybe a little older, a little younger. But we are in that circle, and I know most of you, I mean, oh, yeah, we got a few of you dudes, man. Y'all are 50 years old looking diesel. Okay, I get it. I get it. Whether you have, have a great work ethic as far as a workout ethic, or you're just your genes are just in the right place. Who knows? So, so in fact, you don't even count in this conversation. You can turn this shit off, you know? This is for the rest of us who, and this was never me. See, this is the funny thing. This was never me. Like I said before, I could go, I used to be able to go in the gym, do a few curls, and boom, I'm, I'm looking like diesel. I want to go see a girl, go meet somebody, or look good, or walk into a party. I jump down, do some push-ups, and it's like, boom, come up. Yeah, all right, now I'm ready, <laughs> you know? It, you know, it, now it's not like that. Now I jump down, do a, a, a push-up. I'm going to be like, I'm going to have to pull out my, um, my what's that called? The little, the alert button that's around my neck? No, I don't have that. <laughs> Someone help me, I can't get up. But, uh, but yeah, man, so I know, the, I know the problem. And Angel says, oh, man, sometimes you act too old. You're not that old, you know? Uh, I know I'm not. I know I'm not, I'm not, I'm not even, you know, I'm just, it's just weird, man. It was just always weird for me. But anybody who's, um, a lot of us should be experiencing similar, you know, situations. You know, we start, we start looking at uh, ourselves and then, then you start looking at the younger dudes. The dudes that are in better shape and you kind of look at them and you're like, okay, they could do a few things that probably I can't do, <laughs> you know. You know, hey, listen, the same thing with fighting, man. Listen, I haven't fought in years. I know, man, most likely I'm not going to want to slug it out for long. I'm going to have to go in there and knock your ass out. I'm not going to have that back and forth trying to be Muhammad Ali bouncing around. That's not going to happen. I'm, I was never really much of a wrestler. So I probably won't grab you, but I'll probably try to get close enough to knock you the hell out. I don't have the time or the capacity to try to box with anybody at this point. Okay, I just be fooling myself and I look like a fool or out of breath. So anyway, <laughs> but um, but yeah, you know, and then the health situation, man, for us, man, I mean, I know, especially with Facebook, I mean, I don't, I don't think we're, we're seeing a lot of people, you know, getting diagnosed with uh, a cancer. I mean, it terrifies me. I know it terrifies a lot of guys, eh? a lot of people in general, but it terrifies me for me, for myself, for my family. And it seems like there's so many people, so many people that I know. I don't know if it was always like that, and maybe it's because Facebook exposes it a lot more now. I don't know. I mean, right now I have maybe three or four people that I know personally that have cancer. 
You know, and I pray for each and every one of them, man. It it scares me. I don't want to see any of them go through this. And, you know, that's one of the cures, man. We just really, really need, man. We really need a cure for that crap, man. It's crazy. You know, I mean, people we, people got AIDS and living a full life. You know, HIV, and they're living a full life. Diabetes, they're living a full life. You know, polio was knocked out. Measles was knocked out. All these other, you know, diseases were knocked out. But damn, what's up with this cancer, yo? It's like, come on, man. You know, and then it's like, you're scared to eat this because it causes cancer. Don't brush your teeth because it causes that. Don't drink too much water because it causes cancer. It's like, oh, yo, what do I do? You know, and then you meet someone like my aunt who really didn't really watch everything. She just was comfortable. She's 96 years old, has nothing. She's fine. She's fine. And then you have those dudes who are working out. They're freaking doctors. They work out. They eat all organic. They go to yoga. They don't drink smoke. They don't do anything. And they die of a heart attack. Or they get cancer. Like, what do you do? What do you do? Do you live your life according to the strict and narrow in hopes that you're living the right life so you can live longer? Or do you just go out and enjoy yourself? What do you do? Like, we don't know. I guess that's the thing that we all have to, we all have to do, you know? I mean, I hate to, to think about, let alone talk about it. I think this is probably the first time I ever talked about this. It, it really concerns me. It bothers me a lot. It scares the hell out of me. You know, I'm scared to go to the doctor simply because I'm pretty much, I feel inside that if I go, I'm coming back with some bad news. You know, people say, well, wouldn't you want to catch it? I don't know. I'm scared of what it would do to me mentally. What will it do to me mentally? Will, will it just shut me down? Or will I be better off working and doing what I love until the last day? Like, which one is it? You know? My kids are grown. Okay, my grandkids, but they'll be fine, man. They got parents. My kids are grown. Do they still need me? Probably. You know? I don't know. Sounds a little selfish sometimes, but that's the way I think. And it's scary. I know I'm not the only one. I know... There's probably several of you guys out there that, you know, that feel the same way, you know, and, you know, people feel that, oh, I go to a doctor, that's when you die, once you go to a doctor. Sometimes it seems that way, you know. My mother was fine. My mother was fine until she went to a doctor and they found so-called bacteria in her lungs. Next thing you know, she's got lung cancer. Then she's got breast cancer. Then they remove her breasts and she, well, she dies anyway within a few months. So it's like, well, what is it? Like, just a minute ago, she retired, and she was healthy as a horse, man, as far as the eye is concerned, as far as what we were able to see, you know? Listen, I just pray that we can find a cure for this, man. I believe there's a cure out there. I don't know if people are hiding it from us for whatever the reason is, but, you know, I just wish that there was a cure. I wish there was a flower, something we can eat. I would just, you know, just fight this stuff off, man. And it would be really sad to find out that this was a conspiracy and there was, you know, people behind something like this. Just like they did with AIDS. They said with AIDS, it was be people behind it, you know, running experiments. I mean, man, let me tell you, so anybody who's involved with that evil shit, you better, you better, you better bring some ice cubes with you to the grave because you're going to hell, for real. Anyway, let's talk on a little bit light a note because that's going to get me a little depressed and it's already late and I don't I definitely don't want to go sleep with that shit on my head last thing I want to do is wake up with a nightmare you know so but anyway anybody who's um going through a, uh, any of those situations you know my prayers go out to you and your family you know keep your head up stay strong man fight to the end you know and there's always a reason for something we're just we don't know we just don't know and you know so I just pray that everything turns out well for you and I'm sorry if this got you upset in any way so but anyway um so we're back home again it was a nice show we had a, a pretty good time I'm gonna release a little video maybe tomorrow just some of the behind the scenes stuff that I, I was able to capture it was pretty good tell me what you guys think definitely you know check it out It'll be on my Facebook I always post stuff on my Facebook first and then from there I'll put it on other mediums you know some of the other platforms so tell me what you think. Uh, we had a good time. Uh, show was great. It was a great vibe, man. You know, a big shout out, man. Honestly, a big shout out to all the, all the artists. You know, um, you know Stevie, Lisa, 
Stacy Q, Johnny O, Cynthia, uh, Joey Vestivo, um, of course the Cover Girls. Um, who am I missing? Trinia. Um, yeah, I mean, we are so so fortunate, man. We are so so fortunate. We really have some wonderful artists, you know, that that's a part of this genre, and. I try to tell and, and I try to tell them individually how much I appreciate them. You know, people look at me, they have a different view of me because I have pages like Freestyle Against Phonies, but it's really not something I'm, I'm not trying to hate on anybody. Even, you know, people who, those who are phonies and those who are, are in a situation that can put them in that phony circle. And they're not really phonies. They're not really phonies, you know? And they're just they compromised their situations. Where I start having the issues when it comes to that is when people try to stop others from working. That's it. That's it. But they have to be legitimate. If they're not legitimate, like for instance, you got the phony girls. Not legitimate. Sorry. They're not legitimate. Those girls were not a part of what we have now. They try to make them a part. They put them into the situation that was already flowing. It was like, you know, they put them already on a boat that was already sailing. They weren't part of the creation of that boat. So any anybody can have any kind of, um, can justify whatever they want. They can say whatever they want. No, sorry, that's not the deal. Situations like TKA, yeah, man, that's a rough one, man, because you have K, who's, you know, a part of the original group. Then you got Tony, A.B., and Angel, who were all part of this original group. Now, people would question Angel, but he was still, he's like the Margot of the cover girls. He came in, and he's like the Sheila of the Sweet Sensation. They came in later, but they played a role. They, were, they played a, a role, whether they recorded or not. You know, because then it comes up to the thing as well, well, who sang the song? That's not the point. This is the deal. This is what, what I'm talking about. When you have a group situation, in my opinion, and this goes for the cover girls too, but the original cover girls, if the group came in together, then I think they all belong somehow, some way benefiting from that situation. Whether it's, you know, using the name or I don't think the name should be used in a way to deceive the fans. This is my problem. So I have an issue with anyone using just TKA. Um, I've used different variations in the past because I booked them. And this is before everything got kind of haywire. And you had to kind of sort it and say, okay, wait a minute. Let me take another look at what's going on here. You know, some of the stuff I also did spitefully, you know, just, just in the fights, man. So, but anyway, now I'm kind of pulled back a little bit. I'm looking at the situation. I'm grown up. I'm trying to be a little more mature. I'm trying to really understand the situation, what's going on behind everything. Um... If, let's say, Caroline and Sunshine wanted to break off, or let's say Angel wanted to leave and go solo, does that mean that Caroline and Sunshine should just never go out there and perform and try to make some money? Or not attribute themselves to the cover girl name? I don't think so. You know, I don't think they should grab another girl and call themselves the cover girls. I kind of have an issue with that. Because then you're deceiving the audience. But if you could do, you know... You know, maybe Carolina and Sunshine from the Cover Girls, or like I did with Angel with the Angel OCG, Angel the original Cover Girl. We didn't do Angel. We didn't call her the Cover Girls and put two dances with her. We didn't want to deceive the fans. That was the whole purpose of that. You know, and this should be with everybody. With Sweet Sensation, the same thing. You know, you know. Okay, maybe maybe okay, K7 is kind of doing it the right way. He's doing K7 slash TK. Now he used to do just TK. That was wrong. I'm sorry. And I'm cool with K. I don't have an issue with K. We bumped heads at one point. I'm cool. We're cool. I listen. I stepped out. Reached out to a lot of people because I was fans, and I was always like these people. I didn't want to have no issues with any of them. I really didn't. But sometimes I have to stand up, even if you listen. If it's my son and he's doing the wrong thing, I'm gonna pull him up on it, and that's all I did. The only problem is some people couldn't handle the way I would pull him up, you know. And I, I apologize, you know what I mean? Because this is not my intention. It wasn't what I wanted to do to get in here. But see, now he does K7 slash TK or K, TK slash K7. So when you see that, you know exactly what you're getting. Now, Tony, AB, and Angel, yeah, I think they have to find a very a way of using the TK brand. Because the K is not in there. Or if they do, you know, if they do formally of, okay. I still think there should be a more... 
I think there should be a better way of using the name. You know, Tony A B T K A's Tony A B Angel. I always liked that. I always thought that that was cool, and I thought it told a st- of who who they were without stamping them as T K A. So T K A's Tony A B Angel, which means it kind of um uh, uh kind of says that there's somebody missing from it. You know. But I think if something like that was done, you know, or something to that, instead of just a formula, you know, I don't think even if Angel did the cover girls, I don't think Caroline should ever do formally of the cover girls. Or, I don't know, maybe she could just go out as, Angel, you know, Caroline OCG, like I did with Angel, or Sunshine OCG, or, you know, <clears throat> or how about tribute bands, you know, tribute. The only thing is people who were involved with the original acts, don't want to be called tribute bands. I understand that. But now, then you get stuff like the fake cover girls, Sal's girls. That's basically a tribute band. Yeah, you know, they did Funk Boutique and they did, mm, they were still writing off of the original hits. People just didn't know. I noticed because I was one of those people that didn't know. Before I got with Angel, I thought, Wishing on the Star, when I saw the video, I was like, Is that Angel? Like, I was confused. When I heard Funk Boutique, I thought Angel was part of that. It was, a, you know, it was confusing. It was confusing. I wasn't, I wasn't clear on what was going on. But I'll tell you right now, because um, then people say, well, what if, you know, if if they sing the songs they recorded, and Angel sings the songs that she records it. That's fine with us, because Angel never sings Funk Boutique or Wishing on a Star or any of those other songs. She has plenty of hits. She's got more hits than we can ever actually put in a show. So she doesn't need to do that. But now tell the other ones to do that. If they told, if they said that, it, they'll never work. They'll never be able to do a show. Because if you're a cover girl and you don't sing Show Me, it's done. They're not going to hire you. I don't care who you are. And if they do hire you, you you're doing a freebie. Because ain't nobody going to pay for anything that you're doing cover girls doesn't say. Same thing with Maria, with TK. I think with Sweet Sensation, what would be Take It While It's Hot? Right? Um... You know, all these acts have like their main song that that's that key song. And you try to figure that out. You say, okay, well, what? How do you figure out the main song? Well, easy. If a, if 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 a club or a promoter or maybe a radio station said, you know, or really a club, a promoter says, you know, just sing one song that everybody will know. Then you know which song that would be. Stevie B might be part of your body. I don't know. I would think it would be the Postman song. I think, to me, in my opinion, that had the wider reach, so that might be the song. So imagine him doing a show and not performing that song. I know I would be upset because it was my favorite song, you know, Lisa Lisa, you know. Yeah, she has, you know, she has the fast joints, but that all cried out, man, was a killer. That was a killer song, man. So for her not to sing that song would disappoint a lot of people. I know it will disappoint me. But anyway, guys, I just wanted to uh, bring that up. I'm done for the night. I appreciate you. Be cool. Sleep well. If you're out, be safe. And until tomorrow, good night, Freestyle. Before I lay me down to sleep, I pray to hear a freestyle beat. For if I die before I wake, I hope to make it to the break.